I could make him fly also. Charlotte Soccer Show, John Hayes, Danny Brams, and Anna Witte here on a Sunday at Hot Fly Brewing Company. It's a pleasure to be here. Unfortunately, it's after a loss. It's a 1-0 loss. It's Charlotte FC's first loss of the season. It was bound to happen. So, Danny Brams, I'm taking the viewpoint today that let's just get it out of the way. I mean, we weren't going to go undefeated, right? We got to admit that we weren't going to go undefeated. Uh, thank you, John. Welcome, Anna. Welcome. Welcome, TFOs around the world for watching. We appreciate you all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, win, lose, and draw. We've got one each, right, uh, this season. So which was your favorite, Anna, the win, the draw, or the loss? Or which was your Ooh. least favorite, maybe? I think naturally. <laughs> we'll go for the obvious answer. The least, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, I think there's a lot of positives. The, the tough questions right out of the gate for Danny. <laughs> right. Well, first off, what you drinking? How about we ask what you're drinking first and get the, get the real easy one out of the way? Cheers. Yeah, why don't you start, Anna? Because, yeah. you know, this is a, a first up. for us on the show. We've got a cocktail from Hot Fly today okay. on the show. Yeah, I thought it would mix things up. I got the... Oh, I spilled like half of it. <laughs> Mid-season form. Let's go. The Queen, Queen City Paloma. It's really good. I love it. Highly recommend. It's a fresh, bit. light, beautiful day in Charlotte. Why not? Paloma means dove in Spanish. It's, it's a beautiful day. And when you think about too. it, Danny, right? Uh, a sip of tequila the, the morning after, the afternoon after a loss yeah. is not the worst yeah. idea in the world. The it's wings done. of the dove, baby. Let's go. It's We've got good. the same thing. Extra time, maybe we're trying to kick this. We're trying to kick the keg of extra time. Basically, I just have not stopped drinking this ever since they released it. It's very, very good. I had about ten of them on the uh, Vancouver night. I only had about six yesterday, so cut myself back. I just held myself back just a little bit, but uh, it was matinee. You know, it was a good time. But thanks to everyone who showed up at Hot Fly. We had a really good time oh, partying okay. with Tifos and yes. watching the match, and it was good vibe. And like, I'm really digging the warehouse vibe scene. Some people are not going to like this, but I kind of like how when we watch these games, they've got the audio. I don't think it was on purpose. I think it might have been an accident, but the way the audio setup works is you just hear the crowd noise and the cheering, and they don't have the announcer track. Oh. Some people might want the announcer track. I actually really dig the vibe of like just sort of being able to watch and decide. Don't have to listen to an announcer's analysis. I can decide what I want, but I can hear the stadium and the natural sound, and it's a good vibe. So watch party has been great. Unfortunately, the result was not great. And we were all feeling it. Everybody here was like, oh, this is a bit, we're like, it's a great vibe. And then a freaking wonder strike just kind of silenced us all. Well, that, that's our first comment on the on the show today is, is let's just get that out of the way. Ha ha. Yes. If it had to happen. I can't even be mad about losing on a goal like that. It, it happens. It, it What's was, up, Latin and Fire? It was a wonder goal uh, mm -hmm. from Insigne. And we, we might as well. I love a good celebration. I hate when a when a celebration like that is against Charlotte FC, but it was a wonder strike, and it was even a better celebration. Uh, a moment for Toronto FC, and what was their home opener? Mm -hmm. Even though we always want Charlotte FC to get the result, you can't hate on them for that moment, can you? No, and also on a goal like that, the fact that Insigne can duke everyone in that moment and hit that strike, I think you mentioned the celebration. My favorite was when he beat the Herdman Yo, and mm -hmm. and just like celebrated with him. What a cool moment it for was them. An awesome moment excited for toronto but yeah i mean man herdman's doing some good things up there we heard yeah. we heard about her in the in the in the warm-up in the week previous previous excuse me kaylin kyle was bragging up her old coach and mm -hmm. he gave us a uh, uh, he showed us some things man toronto's tactics were nice they played the false nine they confused us they they switched things up got a little more aggressive in the second half what you heard herdman commented on it post game mm -hmm. about how how they needed to be able to, they were giving up the central part of the field against us. And but when they changed that, that's when they found more success. So credit to us for being difficult to play against. We obviously, even when you lose, you the the mission, the mantra of Dean Smith has said, we want to make this team difficult to play against. And I think that's uh, he's achieved that. He's accomplished that for sure. Toronto now, it's unfortunate to lose to Toronto because even though they have yet to concede this year, they only have two goals this year and they're both like, insigne wonder strikes to the top right corner yeah. like upper 90 like that's the only way they can score in fact we'll hear from dean smith later he said i think that's the only way they would have scored against us so it's a little bit frustrating but we just have to take it but we can try to build on the positives i guess we really want to get into there's kind of a controversy different takes about whether was the goal just a goal wonder strike that like you can never defend or was it bad defense by charlotte should we have known that a guy like Insigne wants to do that run in from the left wing to, and put the, put the ball on his right foot. Was it poor defending? Uh, we've we've seen some different takes. Well, let's watch the, the play. And, you and should we tee it up? Have a debate after. Yeah, let's do it. All right. If you already, ha I'm sure you all had this playing in your uh, head on a loop last night in your nightmares, but we're going to play it for you one more time. 
to this place roar Lorenzo Insigne with venom we talked about Insigne's ability to make up magic out of nothing but he conjures this up from all the way from Naples Italy here in Toronto to the top corner my goodness this is beautiful cuts in and oh yes there is no goalkeeper in the world that's keeping this out here he's working on the weekend like usual Lorenzo Insigne, number 24, jumps into the hands of his new manager, Salute. Ugh. There was that celebration. Ugh. It's hard not to be happy for uh, a great player like Insigne and, and, and a coach that, honestly, that I really respect. I like Herdman, uh, yeah. I do, yeah. Him, as the Canadian uh, men's national team manager, I, I think Canada was playing unbelievably well heading into that World Cup. Something happened. I don't know what, but he's now at, at Toronto. Mm -hmm. But for me, that's that's just what, you know, Danny Brams, when I'm thinking about how I want to set up defensively, mm -hmm. right? I, what I really want to do is make sure that Scotty Arfield is subbed on the pitch and that he's marking the most dangerous player. <laughs> <laughs> you sound is that a sarcasm? That sounds like sarcasm, Johnny. I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's take a look at this and maybe maybe break it down a little bit. It starts off a corner, and and you'll hear we will play Dean's reaction to, the, to all this and Westwood's reaction to this. But like, this looks pretty good, right? Starting like clearing a corner, Kerwin gets a nice kick at it, and it's like okay, we're good, right? But then just didn't uh, didn't continue the defense. I guess you would say. What do you guys see here? I, I think. Charlotte FC just lazily stepped off their line. It was a little too slow. And the second piece watches our field. He really wants to keep Insigne in the wide areas, but because right. he was two or three steps off of him and he's such an elite forward, he's not able to keep him wide. He's able to cut inside because his touch is so tight. And right. then our right there. That's caught. that feels like the moment, right? Yeah. There. yeah. And then there was the two V one Vargas could have sl slid out there and stopped. The right. Var if Vargas in. is standing where the referee is there, then it's a little bit harder for sure. If he starts right. to play there. So when and it's you a give great strike. Space, yeah, and 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 that's where you have your help. So our field wasn't necessarily wrong in that moment if it was mm -hmm. me attacking, but when it's Insigne, he's going to take that strike if, exactly when he sees the moment. If I'm watching this as a fan and I'm just I see a, my team defend a corner and the guy at the top of the box kicks it out deep, I'm thinking, okay, boom, we're good. We just defend the corner. Okay, let me it just, shocks me we're giving him a goal five seconds later. Let me, but you're getting organized. Let me jump in here, right? Please do. And I think Anna is spot on here. I I have. Don't necessarily i wouldn't use the term laziness what i would say is is that the keeper's job in that situation is to make sure that the back line steps way outside yeah. the box, mm -hmm. right you need to make sure that you are stepping two three yards outside the box the ball is now cleared and forcing the, all of these there's six players by the way uh for toronto fc nearing the edge of the box when this ball is is struck right mm -hmm. and you've got an a, a back line that is not in uh, in formation, they're not mm -hmm. in line together. There, that's the one thing that I'm I'm being yeah. critical well, about, right? I mean, the, I think that I the back line could have stepped out and maybe we, worried about an offside. We've gotten actually hang back. I'm sorry, we got nine players behind the ball here. Well, also to John's point, if everyone steps, they're keeping everyone in an offside position, and if you're stepped higher, you're closer to the ball. You're likely to stop it before it becomes dangerous for the goalkeeper. So I think if if the goalkeeper, if the entire back line of Privet and Milanda got everyone stepped just a few seconds earlier, that shot could have been blocked and our field would have had better help. That was my point. Yeah. And, and, I, and I was the one that put out the tweet from our account this morning. Let me just raise my hand on that because I love it. sometimes uh, you put out a tweet and people disagree and want to go back and forth. I, I don't it. know whether it's Danny or I or I that sent it. It was definitely <laughs> okay. me this morning. And what I said was I just felt like uh, there was no where was the help in the middle yeah who wanted to step outside the box and help scott poor scotty arfield sitting there one right one and on poor christian wing. kalina he's 35 years old yeah. against one of the best players in mls and he just didn't get the job done and there was just nobody there to help him and that yeah. that to me i think is i, I called out two players i said where's patrick ajama mm -hmm. the striker right the striker has the ability to just kind of hang out in that area right outside the top of the edge of the box right and where's breck diagre the mm -hmm. number 10 as well who takes up an area and Breck Diagre was was wide here. Patrick Ajman was sitting super deep. I want both of those players to step up. Yeah, Aji's really in the box. Aji's in the box there. The well, also, there's so many heads like 
shifting. They're trying to figure out where their mark is in that moment, knowing Insigne is going to take that shot. If it doesn't go in the goal, there's going to be that second shot opportunity. So you want to make sure the people running in are marked. There's so much happening in that moment that if our field could have just kept him in the wide areas, it would have given his team a second mm -hmm. to collect themselves. But I mean, Insigne is such an elite forward. And, and that's why it's such a wonder goal is because he's so excellent at taking advantage of teams when they're not defensively set. You think it could be the goal of the year in MLS? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's in the running for sure. Yeah, absolutely. At week three, I mean, why not? I, And I don't think Charlotte should be disappointed in just like a, a second turnoff. I think overall the game was really good on their part, but that happens in a 90 plus minute game, you know? I appreciate you saying that because yeah. at Hotfly here, of course, uh, Charlotte Soccer Show presented by Hotfly, an amazing party, as, as Danny mentioned, for this away match yesterday in partnership with the Min City Collective. La Morte was here as well. Shout out to them uh, for hanging out. Uh, I was asking everybody after the match mm -hmm. uh, it, because so many people showed up and I wanted people to have a good time. I was like, well, that was a decent watch, though, right? Like, <laughs> do you kind of enjoy it? Like, it was worth watching. It wasn't because when you don't score a goal and you're rooting for a team, sometimes you feel like, well, that was a waste of my time. Right. But I, I, I never. felt like <laughs> <laughs> never. That's never happened to you. I, like I, I felt like because of of all the set pieces that Charlotte mm -hmm. FC had. Right. I felt like because of all Enzo Capetti's chances, there was a reason for people to get excited during this match, despite not scoring a goal. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even just their defensive set, I thought was excellent. Like week one, that was the biggest emphasis, and that hasn't dropped off at all. You don't get the goal, but you get so many pieces that are coming together. And they've been what ten shots in this game. That's that's a good performance. But yeah, at this level, you need to see one go in the back of the net. Yeah, for me, it's 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 a uh, it's about the fact that we're missing our chances. I think I think none of us expected us to go up and keep a clean shirt on the road at Vancouver or at Toronto. So. We got to score more goals. That's just the fact of the matter. We will look at in. And speaking of scoring more goals, we're going to take a look. We're going to we got a segment on Enzo Capetti coming up here in a second. But let's just since I edited it, let's just let Dean and Ash. Let's hear from uh, Dean Smith and Ashley Westwood what they thought about Insigne's goal, and then we'll come back and tie a bow on that before we move on. Yeah, it was a game that was won by a wonder goal. Um, you know, my reflection now is that we didn't deserve to lose the game. Um, but we didn't deserve to win it as well. I thought we were by far the better team in the first half, um, you know, but they were slightly better than us in the second half. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, when it is that even, one moment of brilliance can can win it, and it did today. First half, we were the better side. It felt like that. Second half, we just come away a bit. I think I think, I think a draw was a fair result. Well, like I said, they just, we've, we've, we've been beat by a, by a worldie of a goal and you just have to hold your hands up sometimes. But we... It was good. There were some good good signs out there, and like I said, we're a group that are that are working hard, sticking together, and it's just which is one of the things that these things happen in football. You just we just got to hold your hands up. You got beat by a bit of a bit of magic, and but like I said, first half we were I think we did enough to to be in front. Yeah, I, I think they've had probably seven or eight shots from outside the box from twenty five yards that you know supporters have been getting hit on the head with. So you know sometimes, unfortunately. You know, he puts one that into the top corner. He, he's done that for a number of years. Uh, he is a quality player. We wanted him to be coming into traffic, but I think it was second phase from a from a corner. Um, they'd actually messed up the corner. I think Kerwin tried to get hold of it, and he they ended up uh, picking up the second ball. But it was it was a superb finish, and were, you know, I, f I felt that was the only way they were going to score against us. To be honest, there you have it. Uh, if, we, if we give the last word to Dino and Ash, just a wonder goal, nothing you can do about it. But I do like the fact that it's not good enough for us. Like, we've heard that so much as fans, like, oh, there's nothing you can do, nothing you can do. That At this point, I'm just like, remember when we did a pregame show and you were like, Danny, what's your pregame speech to the guys in the locker room? I was like, you're undefeated and you're not good enough, damn it. And I was like yelling at them and I was excoriating the team in, the, in my hypothetical pregame speech. And that's how I feel right now is just like, it's not good enough to just say, oh, we were beaten by a wonder strike when there's clearly obvious defensive lapses and there's things you could learn. I, just, I It's fine for Dean and them to say that at the press conference. I hope they're saying something different when they go to the film session. Yeah, I think Keegan made a really good point in the comments. It's really hard to Keegan's defend a forward coming across in the midfield. Like our field's foot positioning, his footwork really had to change in that moment. He also had to be aware of who could help him if he should have mm -hmm. maybe dove a little bit with his leg for that stop. So that was a really, a really good point. You have to be like athletically able to. If anyone that. should be familiar with Lorenzo Insigne's game on this club, it should be Scott Arfield, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, Scott, Scott Champions Yanko, League. of course, knows right. how to defend in this situation. But I'll just yeah. go back to my original point, even though it was, I was being satirical, is the fact that if I were to choose the worst person to be put in that situation on the squad of the 11 players that were on the field, Scott Arfield would have been the worst player in yeah. Yeah. that situation. Yeah. He's just not at this stage in his career mm-hmm. coming onto the pitch with 20 minutes left in the match to play defense. Right. Well, you can see it. He's playing a step off because he knows he can't do it. Right. To your point. Exactly. He yeah. needs he needs the space. He can get right. Ready I bet he wishes he would have forced him wide, though, instead of letting him lean in. I wish he would. I mean, sure. I'm sure he's thinking, OK, force him wide. Don't let him get across on that left. And it's just like. Hindsight's 2020. Yeah. yeah, unfortunate. Wait, is that the saying? Hindsight's 2020? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Nice. Okay. <laughs> nice. I like that. Just make it sure. So, okay, so we gave up the goal, right? And it was late, and we had done had such – we'd been difficult to play against. We had some really nice defensive organization. And that's where we get to my, where I think the problem is with this team and where this team needs to go – really focus on in, in the next coming weeks here as we go to Nashville and then bring it home against two really tough teams. We got to score more goals. We're getting the chances. We've got to score more goals. And I got to – we got to call out our DP. Our, Copetti's the, the man. I got a pretty sad little highlight rip here that I want to play, and then I want to tee you guys up and see what y'all think about it, all right? By VAR. And here's the play. Devach comes in and plays an absolute peach of a ball here to the Argentine striker. And Gavran comes off his line. Does he get a touch to the ball or the striker? Yeah, it looks like landing gear from Copetti. Gavran does a good job to make sure that he doesn't get a touch in on the arc. The correct one, according to you, Jalil and Ibaba. Good feet there from Devach. That's a typical ball in through the lines from Alanda. Again, a very good ball. Charlotte's off to Westwood to Copetti. Copetti's away from the defender. Saved by Gavran. I, I couldn't even bring myself to put a replay of that last one because it made me so mad. No, just kidding. I would have put it, but it, it, they didn't provide it to me in the highlight package. But that last one is bad. What do you guys think of just what we just saw there? I, I want to hear from Anna on that big chance missed, that, that final highlight that we saw. But I, I do want to address the, the, pen, the penalty that was called that went to, to Vaughn right. in the box. Um, was it a penalty on the field? Uh, I was not a penalty on the field. The play continued for like three or four minutes, and then, then they the told him to go to VR. Yeah, here yeah, it is, right here. Asked the referee to to go take a look at the monitor. This could mm-hmm. have been a foul, and it wasn't. Right, was not and a foul. The reason why it wasn't a foul is because somehow, some way, Enzo Capetti, the master of getting fouled, the master of receiving contact and going to the ground, somehow. Some way, Enzo Capetti could not drag his right leg, receive contact from that keeper, and go to the spot. And I bring this up because things are starting to add up for me when it comes to Enzo Capetti. <laughs> I mean, this is a striker's opportunity to do exactly what they've been taught to do their entire career. That 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 sliding tackle by the keeper is so egregious. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you don't have the wits about you to drag your right foot, how, how do you receive not- the contact and go take a penalty to get the, the game started one nil is absolutely absurd especially coming from the guy that loves to just flop all over the floor all game long right this guy, he's starting to drive me insane and he, he picks his his right foot up there you can see on the one replay yeah, he, he yeah, hops over the keeper's leg instead of dragging contact. it yeah He's inside the box. He says, you know what? I'm actually going to go around. I mean, it's just an egregious sliding tackle <laughs> by that keeper there. Right. And the backup keeper, by the way, not their start. Their starting right. keeper got hurt in training the yeah. day before the game. I appreciate you letting me jump in there and go off on that. I really wanted to. But it was a big chance that was, it was. missed as well. I, right. mean, I think Capetti thought he had beat the defender that was coming in. So maybe he could slide it in with his left foot. But to your point. This one's a, way worse. As an elite number nine, you have to know to be fouled in that moment, to go down and, and draw that contact. Anna, tell us what you think here, because this is just bad. This is such a yeah. sick entry pass, this, too. And it's a great touch from Capetti to beat right. his defender, to go central. He's essentially 1v1 against the goalkeeper, and to shoot it down the middle of the goal. That says a number nine. Right. You see the left, you see the right, or take an extra touch and see where the goalkeeper right. is is trying to dive and go the opposite way. I mean, he is dead center at the top he, of the 18. It, the goalkeeper's a few steps off of his right. line. And he's trying to go inside post here. Right. He's trying to beat the keeper on the keeper's right, right. on Enzo's left, and it just... 
and and the amount of film Capetti watches in. Excuse those me, moments, outside post. Excuse me, outside post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse no, me, I'm sorry. Falling, forgive I'm me. Falling. But but he had like tons of room there on the other side, he on the did. left side. And he watches film on this. Right. Well, maybe it's not much film because he was new to the game. But as <laughs> a new keeper, still yeah. watch enough film to know where their tendencies are or where they want to dive. So going the opposite way in the moment. I mean, so many good opportunities. And Westwood, West, the touch you say is so good. Like Westwood yeah. puts this ball in a nice spot and ends up with that first. That first touch is brilliant. Let, let, me, let me call out this. Uh, pause right there. Move it back just a few, a few frames, Danny Rams, because there's this incredible comment again from Keegan in the chat. He goes, "What exactly has <laughs> Nate Burns seen all season that makes him think he should be celebrating before Enzo buries the chance?" Oh, good point. Nathan Burns is down there, has his hands in the air. He thinks it's it's. Yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see yeah. old Bernie. Everybody expected the well, one on one to be finished. We even said that Thursday, like this was Capetti's game to show up and to find right. the back of the net. I think a third game, he's feeling the <laughs> Look pressure. Burn, <laughs> burn to celebrate. Oh my gosh, Keegan, great, That's great spot good. by Keegan there for sure. That is that is amazing. That is a great spot. And, and shout out to uh, the Rev, uh, Christopher Gallagher, of course. Um, talking about Capetti needing to drag his foot to get that contact. Great yep. call like Darwin Nunez mm -hmm. did today yep. for Liverpool. That's exactly right. If you haven't seen that play today, Darwin Nunez in the in the massive Premier League match this morning, uh, he got fouled in the box on the keeper, received the contact. Alex McAllister stepped up to the spot, scores the the game tying goal, and it's one of the biggest goals of the season. And you know, for me personally, Danny Rams. And by the way, shout out to to the ref. He brought us some incredible. <laughs> he brought us these, this incredible gift yesterday to the party, where Danny, Danny Brams and I could be Thank handing you, out uh, red cards and yellow cards. Right. As well. Did you want to go through the list of yellow cards that you? Uh, yeah. John actually issued some yellow cards and wrote them down <laughs> wrote in, them in down. his book. Yeah, 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 yeah. With a little well, pencil he gave. Yeah, you. with, with the, the pencil. Yeah. How cute. Pencil, just like exactly right. So there's right. two things that I wrote down, and um, the first one is that Matt Geslin got a yellow card as well. Acting like a general, um, general jackassery, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, Matt, thank you so much for right. all the photos, and amazing all stuff, all your help at the party as well. It was, it was one of those. It was a professional yellow on his part for sure. It's like, sure. Yeah, nothing, nothing against him, but Enzo Capetti, yellow card as well for those big chance missed. We know and why. Who's number ninety nine on Toronto? Right, number ninety nine on Toronto. He's the he's the he's the player that caused, in my opinion, Prince Ose Owusu. All oh, the, yes. All the ruckus at the end of the match. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like he deserved. A yellow in this match for sure and unfortunately i've got ashley westwood down here as well it just seemed like ashley westwood was absolutely cooked at right. the end of this match and by the way it seemed like he was cooked in that press conference as well uh not great vibes in that well, in that press conference after the match i've got one more oh. uh the yellow card for set pieces as well so many corners mm -hmm. i think there was eight right. or nine corners seven, seven i seven, think seven corners yeah, i mean that's a lot yeah. and and in my opinion if, if charlotte fc has seven or eight or nine right. corners on a day, you got to score off. Well, Urso of just missed. Urso had the glancing header go just wide. Privet had a, a head headed shot on goal that could have gone in and was saved. We saw the little, the triple, the, the I don't even know what we'd call that, the ball that was off Breck's head, off Addy's head, uh, over to uh, Enzo, and he heads it to the goalkeeper. So we had like three shots on goal off set pieces, just none of them went in. So right. don't love that. You mentioned uh, Westwood, maybe his press conference. Let's listen to a little more of what Westwood and Dean had to say. This is them talking about first half chances and specifically Enzo and just what we need to do better. Any trip on the road is tough. Like I said, but we, but we come here, come here today and we've, we've give a good, give a good account of ourselves. And like I said, we should have, should have maybe got something in the first half and then we would have, I think we would have seen it out. He's, he's not upset with his performance and he shouldn't be. Um, he'll be upset that he didn't score because he had a big chance. Um, you know, and the referee got called over as well. He made some really good runs and that's what we want him to do, um, you know, because the referee was called over as well for another VAR, VAR incident. I haven't seen him back, so I don't know. Um, you know, but as I said before, if he keeps making good runs, then he'll get good chances, you know, but he has to start taking them as well. But, but, but. <laughs> Uh, shout out to everybody in the, in the comments who are hitting us up about our audio. Um, I'll speak louder. I have no problem right. speaking louder. Dan. I'm just so eating Dan, the mic. Dan's yeah, bo booming his yeah. his mouth in here, um, and I we can definitely get into that and and uh, talk a little louder. Too, yes, yeah. sure. we, this is a um, a bare bones production. I think we do our production pretty well too. By the way, yeah, absolutely. For, for the three of us just right. hanging out here at Hot Fly well, on a Sunday you know, afternoon, hey, yeah, it's all you guys. And then we don't charge a subscription fee. You know, so uh, you get a full <laughs> refund if you don't like the audio. No and we might even buy you some beers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe or Gar cocktails. Yeah, or cocktails. Yeah, yeah. cheers. Yeah. Um, hanging out. So, so what did you make of, of what Dean Smith said there, Danny? Post game, uh, did, did you think that he is somebody that is starting to see cracks in the foundation yeah. of his squad? 
Well, remember what uh, what he said at the very beginning of the season, even before Swiderski left. He said he said Enzo and Carroll are designated players, but they're not my designated players. They got to prove themselves to me. And Carroll didn't. And Carroll was shipped out. And Enzo's been getting his chances, but he's not taking his chances. And as Pat's as uh, Dean said there, it's a big big deal. Um, uh, I think he's covering for Enzo. I do think Enzo, his XG on the year is about is about at one. Yeah. So it's like he should be ha- – like I feel like he should have three goals already. I think he should have scored in every single game so far. He easily – he had the blown chances against Toronto and Vancouver, and he should have yes. taken the penalty against That's New correct. York. So yeah. Enzo should be seeing on three, maybe four goals if, if we get into those floodgates open situations. He's doing good work. He's getting decent player ratings. He's earning praise for his off the ball work, but he's hired, he's paid to score, score goals. goals. And it's like off the ball work is nice, you need it, but like a lot of people can do that. Yeah. I thought, I mean, I don't know how what you guys think about XGs. I read a, a very interesting book, and when I remember what the title is, I'll share about XG and how it works and the people who created it and what they look for. But the game against Toronto, he had 0.28, which is terrible he only had two shots but you look at everyone around whom who created opportunities Westwood was the only one who created three opportunities I mean the rest of the midfield didn't create anything for him so as much as you lean on a player like Capetti to score goals this is a team sport and they do have to get the ball I mean in the first half they only had actually throughout the whole game they had 40 percent of the possession which is fairly okay but in order for Capetti to score and get better opportunities Charlotte has to win the ball a little bit higher up the field and that's what we saw Smith doing like he was screaming step get higher he really wanted the uh forwards to step on Toronto's back line to win the ball to create those better opportunities and to get that XG higher so it's everyone but I agree like I mean Capetti still has to show up for what it's worth, that's exactly why Anna Witte is here on the show because <laughs> as I'm sitting here bitching and moaning about our number nine not scoring and, and thinking about this as a, a singular issue for the squad, Anna, the real soccer analyst, you bring up a great point. And when I when I think back to the match, right, other than the, the crosses, mm-hmm. not a lot of oh, – excuse me, other than the corners, yeah, yeah. not a lot of crosses into right. the box right. from right. midfield positions right. at all. Right. Deagra – a uh, guy that I've chose to hopefully be the MVP of the season of the C- team this season has been mostly invisible, has not really delivered. I know he's doing work out there. I've liked his hustle. I really liked his hustle in the opener against New York. But I need to see more from him. This is a guy that I was out there telling people was going to be our best player this year. Yeah, I mean, looking at Fought Mob, Diagra only had seven passes in the final third. That's horrible. From your 10, yeah. you need, you you need like yeah. 20? Right. I think in order to create for Capetti, I mean, yes, he's a nine, and I won't, uh, you know, repeat myself, but they have to be better in between the lines and they have to be better in the final third of the field. Defensively, I think they're set. It's just getting Mm -hmm. the front four, front five on a similar page. I mean, Breck's numbers look like a a six to me, not a 10, you know, that or or maybe an eight. But I mean, you look, he's got, you know, more fouls than he was fouled. He's, He's got more tackles than dribbles. And it's just, it gets to the point where it's like, you know, Two if, touches in yeah, the opposition I, box. Right. That's and I like not even a shot. I like the heat map. I don't hate the heat map, but I don't love the heat map. He's a number 10, and his two red spots are on the wings. Again, right. our whole Pretty issue was is we didn't want Dagger on the wings. We want him to be playing centrally more this year. So I don't know. I, I we need to see more. I need to see more from the guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, th- I think we're cutting through the bullshit right now. I think this has been a really good segment, and I think it's been a sobering segment. And this doesn't mean that things are are going poorly. It does not mean that, that Charlotte FC is, is in a spiral right now. I think what it means is that after getting three points to start the season and having to go play a really, really tough road match at Vancouver, one of the longest trips, the longest trip of the season. The you longest feel, possible trip we could yeah. make. You, you feel good about that coming right. back to Charlotte, but then you got to go back up to Canada again. And... I think another point worth making is the last two weeks were both teams' home openers as well. Right, right. right, you know, right yeah, the yeah. vibe, yeah. The, the atmosphere in Toronto. Mm-hmm. You could see by that that goal. It was a it was a really great atmosphere in, in Toronto they yesterday, and it was they a were really, really difficult place to win. But, and I mean this sincerely, is is that when you look at both games, both Vancouver and Toronto, the thing that really sticks in my crawl when I go to bed at night, when I wake up in the morning, and I think about one point out of six. I remember these big chances in the first half, and I just think these games could have looked so different. Mm -hmm. And as a player, right, and you're out there, you're you're going 90 minutes, of course. In the Premier League specifically, Mm -hmm. there's this – there's a stat this season where so many goals are happening after 85 minutes. 
that aside, right, there's going to be a lot of goals scored at the end of games. But when you can score goals in the first half, yeah. right, when you can cash one in, when you can go into halftime feeling good about yourself, all of a sudden you feel the confidence to go back out there. Two games in a row now where Charlotte FC – concedes heading into halftime mm -hmm. and also goes into the halftime with, without any goals. Yeah. What can you do in the first half to make sure that you're, you're scoring goals and giving confidence to your squad? You have to dominate the possession a little bit more. And it's fair to your point, I think, going into somebody else's home on their opening day, you know you're not going to possess the ball as much as the opposition. So the defensive pressure was there, but I think you have to be able to create more in the final third. You have to be more of an attacking mindset and not so much leaning on your defensive set. Um, and I think, too, as the season goes on, it's going to get better. Like, we have to remember, this is only the third regular season game that right. they have with Coach Smith. Right. And I, I think they're and we're so used to being to, We're used to sitting 0-3 yeah. after three games yeah. the first two years of the franchise. <laughs> yeah, we've got True. four points. Yeah, we're True. actually we're in, in a great spot. literally infinitely ahead of our, our pace mathematically there. So Yeah. No, and, and it's all good. I just think now they're, they've got the defensive piece set, which sometimes is the hardest piece to get set. Sure. And They're very organized. Very and organized. The funny thing to me, I said this yesterday. Dean Smith wasn't necessarily known as a defensive coach back in England. He was known as sort of a run and gun, you know, score outscore the opponent. He wasn't a guy that really concerned himself too much with defense. But just by having a little bit of English Premier League pedigree and coming in here and just like doing the basics, he's already improved our defense without hardly even making his big focus. I think and, that's great. And I think MLS is naturally a transitional league, so we're used to seeing like them teams trying to get forward really quickly and break lines. Charlotte's made that really difficult for other teams to do because of that defensive pressure. That's how they got their goal last week was they stepped, they, they cornered Vancouver in the corner. They won the ball back. They put the ball in the box and then a Tarvish right. goal. A great cross from Brecht. You know, he did have, yeah. you know, he can cross it folks. You know, we like to see it. <laughs> so you guys are talking and it's just so interesting that that's where you guys took the conversation was first half, first, second half, because that is the net, the final soundbite rip that I put together here from Westy and the coach. Which is basically just uh, them talking about the what they've seen as an inability to finish games, basically. And so let's listen to this, and then come out on the back end. And I think you guys are going to like what you're, and I think you're really going to like what you hear right at the end of this from Dino. Uh, for first half, definitely, um, I thought we had really good control of the game today, with and without the ball. We made them go where we wanted them to without it, and with the ball, I thought we was a real threat, um, you know, and, and caused them lots and lots of problems. Um, you know, second half, I thought they came out a little bit better than we did, and we we stopped putting the ballers into areas that was causing them problems. Um, you know, uh, yeah. So no, no, I thought they did did okay to be honest. It's, 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 these things happen. It's we've we've shown we can. We're we're on the road. It's it's never easy. I said with New York, we've we've scored a goal and did what we needed to do to get the win. We look. We look organised. We look. We're, we're creating chances. Like I said, well, our tip, we're we're making chances. So we're not we're not worried about we haven't scored in the second half. No, that's that's not that's not in our minds at all. Not one bit. We've we're creating chances. And the manager said, good players, good players get chances. So that's that's what we're doing. We take positives out of that. We we should be scoring them. But these things. This is this is what football is early in the season. There's there's a long way to go, and we're all going to get better. Yeah, pretty much so. And you know, I just said to the players. I mean. What was the 82nd minute or something they scored? I think that's the first time since I've been at the club, including all pre-season games, that we've actually fell behind in a game. Um, you know, I, I thought we'd give them loads of problems in the first half by playing balls into the spaces in behind them. And we probably stopped that a little bit in the second half. And, and um, you know, the positive first half that we had probably, we probably went. And there's been a theme a little bit. Um, you know, that I'll look at over the, like, over the first three games of the season. We'll probably just probably been too big a drop-off in the second half that we haven't managed to change from the bench so far. Um, but hopefully we will with the, you know, the players who are coming in as well. A really astute point astute. from Dean Smith there about word. the, the drop-off in, in mm -hmm. the second half. And it's a theme. It's a little bit of a theme he started to notice through three games. You know? Exactly. I think I've noticed it too, Dean, by the way. I, I think everybody watching has noticed. Yeah. Patrick Ajama, I think part of the reason why the drop-off happens is because the substitutes are not doing a good job off the bench. Right. It just is what it is at this point. I don't want to make a referendum on the, the bench at this moment, but what I'll say is, is that Scotty Arfield obviously did not do a good job against Insigne. Nope. Uh, for, and Patrick Ajama has come out now two games in a row Loved and has made, and made no impact whatsoever. So mm -hmm. Dean Smith is right. There's a theme, but how do you fix it? 
get the subs on the field a little bit earlier. Oh, uh, subs? No? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. you got to give these players a few more minutes to get into the game. 20 minutes and expect right. them to have like a peak performance when your team goes down 10 minutes later. For me, I'm not saying these are the right subs or maybe they don't have the depth that they they want at this moment but the 60th minute when you see your team maybe needing that extra ump just put like one sub out on the field personally would be my, my a, a lot of times anna i think about substitutions as a manager versus manager momentum situation yeah and when i saw john herdman call his substitutes up off the bench first to put him in the game i go herdman makes the first move yeah how is dean gonna respond and i thought it like it took a long time because uh, herdman substitutions came in 10 minutes before three minutes they had three subs before charlotte had one right exactly and mm -hmm. I, so i think john herdman did a heck of and a the, job and, and there was a tactical change involved in that as well and right. it was effective right so i listen i i, I am full dinos at the wheel Right. But I'm also willing to recognize when Dino's he gets at the outmanaged wheel, and John Herdman deserves credit because he managed his team brilliantly yesterday. And maybe don't forget it. Dean is trying to figure out how far he can stretch his starters. Like what is their breaking point? When can they when do they need that sub? And who is that good sub off the bench? Well, know. I'll tell you, that sub's about to be Mr. Yuri Tavares, who has been starting, because the key thing that, that yeah. Dino said there at the end is we're getting some players in. Okay. And everybody needs to keep this whole fresh uh, mindset. If if you were upset about yesterday's loss, just remember, we've got Abada. He's on the wing, and he's coming in. Liel Abada is going to make a massive difference in this in this club, in this culture, in this league. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to instantly become our best player. I hope. Maybe I'm putting too much pressure on him. But just from what he's been able to accomplish, he accomplished a lot more in the Scottish League than Enzo Capetti even accomplished in the Argentine League. So I'm going to put that mantle on a bot of coming in here to be our best player until we sign a new DP number 10 in the summer. Who knows? But Ooh. I just think a bot is going to make a huge difference because he because we, he gives us that extra depth. Tavares is a guy who is very good. He's already scored a, an MLS goal. Tavares coming in off the bench is a little bit better than Ninfasha Burkima's coming off the bench, in my opinion. As much as I love Ninfasha, as great and as a future he has, Tavares a little, little I, I feel a little more dangerous with Tavares. What if there. what if you put a bada in the 10 role, which is where they need help? Or I, maybe you slide one of the wingers in, like Vargas comes in. It's, and, a, good, it's a good question. They tried Vargas know. to the 10 once, didn't they? Yeah, but he'd that? have a better. They, they tried Camille at the 10. They? they tried Camille okay. on the 10 once and it was horrible. I don't think we've ever tried Vargas at the 10. I don't hate it. How about Vargas as a striker right. and Copetti gets <laughs> to take Copetti out for a game? Might as well. I mean, that's probably more Ajimong if Copetti rests. But I, I mean, it's interesting. I think Abada is tough for me to consider as a 10 just because everything they said him out of the wing. But I like where yeah. you're going with like, let's reimagine everything. Let's, right. like, let's not lock anyone into pigeonhole position. And maybe he likes the 10 better. And maybe that's what worked for him in Scotland. But maybe he's more comfortable. Probably not. Right, yeah, but I'm just know. saying yeah. like, we don't. We don't know, and maybe they might try a different formation. Who I, knows? I love your creative Reaching for the stars. Your creative thinking because that's MLS, right? <laughs> yeah, so MLS exactly. is a, is a yeah. league where you can be creative, yes. where you have players who can make impact at so many different forward positions. Because when you have a skill set, when you have talent mm -hmm. that is so much better than maybe the rest of the league, and at this mm -hmm. point, based on what we've heard, Lee Alabad is somebody that was potentially set for a move to the English Premier right. League, Everton, in a Crystal year or two. Palace, yeah. Mm -hmm. If he's the type of player that's coming into Charlotte FC, even though he's a traditional right winger, and that's where I'd love to see him play and play directly, if he has any interest in playing the 10, why not give him a look yeah. there too? Sure. And and help him build out his profile as a complete player. I would like to see him as as doing what Denny Buanga does for LAFC, which is a winger who just does everything. And especially now that Vela has left their team, like I just think he can have that type of impact. Like he is a winger, but we once again we want the ball at his feet, and uh, he is a little bit of a tap in merchant also. But he got a lot of assists, so like let's give him the ball and let's make sure that the what we the one thing I cannot have I cannot have Leo Abada show up and let we assume his his debut is going to be a home debut against uh, Cincinnati in two weeks. I can't have him show up and like not be getting passes. It's like every pass the first. 50 passes of the match need to be from whoever's got the ball pass to Leo. That's, that's where I'm at right now. So. <laughs> get, get him comfortable. That would be good, the ball. yeah. Get him comfortable. Yeah. There's, there's, there's nothing like a new player getting into a squad right. and feeling comfortable on the mm -hmm. ball. Touches really matter. They do. Right. When you touches, have those touches, right. when you touches. get those touches, especially in the final third, it just builds confidence. So yeah. it's, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you all on the show today. Yeah. Don't worry, we've got more to come.
We're not done. It, Anna Witty is here. I need to catch up. You guys, like, I look over and you've already drank your <laughs> entire drink. beer. You've got to pull up. You, let's, let's, let's check the scoreboard here. I was pretty weak the other week, I'm too. Done. So. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Johnny's on number two, though. I'm on number one. So uh, it, it's, it's a Sunday show at Hot Fly. This is uh, something that we really enjoy doing. We appreciate everybody being here live. What we're going to do on the other side is we're going to come back. We're going to give you an MLS scoreboard update, some interesting scores today Sunday in the results. league Crazy. as well as yesterday to shout out mckenzie Gaines. three games in danny and i am now interested in talking about the table on the show oh, which is super the exciting we but love the table I, I waited till three games to, to start talking about the table we're going to do that and we're going to highlight a charlotte fc player that is not getting enough attention he's a classy player we're going to discuss him next it's charlotte soccer show we're back after this
Welcome back here at Hot Fly. Cheers to you, Danny. Cheers to being human together. Human and cheers together. To you. Human together. Anna as well. I'm sorry to cheers. I had to switch it up. It's yeah. okay. But, um, What'd you get? I, I, we've got human together. Human together. Yes. Human together, baby. I like that name. They've got such creative names here. They do have great names. That's yeah. why I like saying it on the show, too. Yeah. Uh, Hot Fly has this uh, fresh drop Friday okay. series where every Friday they brew new beers and launch them here. Mm. So they can really come up with as many names as possible, right? Yeah. Human, humanly possible. Yeah. Human, human together. Well, the thing human of it is, together. I always say it's impossible to be human alone because the human condition is society and community. So yeah. gotta be you can only you can't be a human unless you're together, in my personal opinion. So. I could not True. agree with you more. And it's so nice to just you know, be here on a Sunday afternoon with, with our friend Anna, of course, with Danny as well. And with all of our uh, friends, our tremendous friends right. on the show yeah. on Saturday. Who stuck with us through a little break there. Thank you, everybody, who stuck through the break. Hope the audio, hopefully, you're hearing the audio. We tried to do a, a minor adjustment there. Hopefully, everybody's feeling good, hearing good, and loving life based on what we saw in MLS today, Johnny. MLS scoreboard time. And we wanted to bring this up right now because Nashville, Charlotte FC's next opponent, played this afternoon and they tied LA Galaxy 2-2. Danny, I wanted to bring up this point to you, right? When Charlotte FC finished its match yesterday at 4 p.m. Eastern time mm -hmm. against Nashville. Or against uh, yes, against Toronto. Against, against Toronto. Toronto, excuse me. Nashville still had 180 minutes <laughs> of football to play <laughs> right. before we meet them on Saturday we like that. in the Music mm -hmm. City. I think that really bodes well for Charlotte FC. Well, they got another, what, 90 minutes? Oh, you're right. Sorry, yeah, yeah. 180. So another one yes. Wednesday. <laughs> yes, Sorry. Exactly. I, well, the math wasn't mathing for me there. That's all right. You but got there. It's I got a, there. It doesn't matter how long it takes to get there. Just get there. <laughs> At That's least I'm I here. Say, yeah, sure. yeah. No, that is a huge plus, especially when Charlotte has to stay on the road. They're traveling again to Nashville. Um I think that's always something that you have in your back pocket that you have a few days ahead region wise and right. game planning. And even though we're going on the road and Nashville played a total clown car lineup today, they played all subs. Uh, they started McKenzie Gaines, who has not been a starter for them normally. He got an assist. We love you, McKenzie. Come on the show. Um, always for a hashtag forever the crown, McKenzie Gaines. But he got an assist today in their 2 2 draw. I think they were up big, they were up 2 0. I think they conceded two late ones uh, mm -hmm. to, to draw. That's good. good because if you looked at the table today, yeah. even after our loss against Toronto, if you look at the Eastern Conference table today, Charlotte FC is in a playoff spot and Nashville's not. So I know we're going on the road to their place, but with the extra games and the banged up injuries and them not really, they keep rotating their goalkeepers between Joe Willis and Elliot Panico. We have to feel like this is another chance to go up and get points on the road. And every time Charlotte FC drops three points on a weekend, mm -hmm. I'm always looking at the scoreboard to mm -hmm. see who else is dropping points. And to see today, Cincinnati and yes. DC United. That's a great draw for us. Both no, no. Yeah. dropping yeah. two points, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's a great draw for Charlotte FC. Those are yep. those are two clubs that Charlotte FC is going to be competing with over the next five months. And to see Inter-Miami trailing a half. No Messi. Wait, in the what? Lineup. Me Messi's out. Suarez on the Miami's bench. losing? Miami's losing. Ariel Lasseter with the assist. Son of Roy. Uh, Roy Lasseter, a name that you might become familiar with here in the next week. But... I think it's time, Johnny. Now, you said you don't like to do this too early, but I think it's time to look at the table. I mentioned, I referenced it, and I, it's crazy to think that we're, or we're in playoff position. It's a good, good feeling. I, I've got thoughts on this table. You can see Charlotte FC right there in the eighth position, which is the play-in match. I would very much prefer to not have to do that again this season. <laughs> a yeah. play-in match against Atlanta would be pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. it, it would be the ultimate uh, By derby. The way, just real quick, just quick mea culpa here. I got to do it. I did my banter with Atlanta when we had Kaylin on the show. I said, aha, you just sleep when you need to catch up on sleep. You just turn on an Atlanta United game. You catch up on your sleep. They posted four goals against New England the other, uh, on Saturday, including a hat trick from Giomaki. So I apologize, Atlanta. It's just banter. Get over it. I heard some shit being talked my way. Oh. Just because I'm having a little fun. Proceed. Yeah, I mean, there was. I, I woke up one morning. I looked at our notifications on X, and I saw some Atlanta fan trying to say that he was sleeping with my mother. And I was like, I don't think you have. <laughs> but anyway, here's the table, um, and I'm curious to get Adam's take on on this table right now. Yeah. Uh, obviously, someone that covers MLS as a whole, 
Uh, where does Charlotte kind of fit into this mix right now? It feels like it feels like a team based on what everybody said preseason that shouldn't be even there at this point. Yeah, I think in middle of the table really is a good spot to be. I, I think it's still really early where they're still you could see they're tinkering with some things, especially in the attack. But you have to be happy that you're not at the bottom and you're not working up. I think the biggest thing to keep your eye on at this point is the goals for right now. Charlotte has two. Atlanta has four. And those become really important towards the end. I mean, Inter Miami sitting at the top with eight in the Eastern Conference. Um, points are important, but also making sure you're getting those goals outside of just the points. Yeah, we need Miami to lose this game. Yeah. I, I, I predicted that Miami would be a fringe playoff team with all their old guys. Because if Miami does. Really? Lose, yeah. That's what you predicted. Uh, yeah, Why? When, uh, when Ferrios, when, when, once Facundo Ferrios, their young guy that they signed. Yes. When he got injured and out for the year, I was like, they're not going to make it because because Suarez and Messi and Busquets, I don't think they'll hold up for the whole, oh, whole, I, whole year. So we'll see. I don't know. We'll I go against that. I'm going to say that right now just to be a devil's I, advocate. Oh, you should for sure. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. I like, think they'll. I, I'm just. It's a it's a bold take for me to predict Miami uh, is weak this year, but I really think they will be. I'm sure. with I'm with Anna for what it's worth, yeah. and the reason why is because in MLS, I just kind of think that there's this uh, ace in the deck, if you will, when you have players that know how to score. Yeah, yeah. when you have the best player. Yeah. yeah, you saw it in the I get it. You saw it in the Champions Cup. Yep. This past week, where Luis Suarez at the end of the match knew exactly how to put one in right. uh, to get Miami uh, a result that, that they needed. And they had they know how to manage themselves. I mean, they had an, an insane preseason. Like, soccer aside, they were traveling like crazy. And for them to be able to now put away eight goals, um, I know it's still the beginning of the season, but preseason, man, that takes a toll on people who are 36, 37 um, in this league. It does take a toll, and that's why some out there are predicting them to be a fringe playoff team. But... Uh, <laughs> I say in a good way. <laughs> Looking down at the bottom of the table, kind of weird to me to see Orlando and New England uh, both sitting uh, at a minus six goal differential down at the bottom of the table. Mm -hmm. These are two teams that were predicted to be uh, up near the top of the table in terms of having some of the most talent on their squads. So still, there's still a lot of, of shape to be taken here from this table. But I got to say, it does feel pretty nice to be sitting in the middle of it instead of at the bottom of it. Totally. It's not even about the, the place on the table for me right now. It's okay. a point. What is it's it? It's about? about the points accumulation. Sure. And the, goal and the reason why this inter Miami Montreal match is so important, by the way, we're going to be done here in just a few minutes. So after we're done, you can switch over to that. Don't yep. do that right now. But Don't do it yet. <laughs> no, we're still here. Thanks everyone for being here. If Miami does lose, Charlotte FC is three points off of first place in right, the East. Right, right, right. right. And, and when right. you and when you think about it that way, I think that's the best way to think about the table. Yeah. At this point, so yeah. th that's your MLS table update. And Danny, we've got one final segment on the show tonight. Well, Sar Charlotte is a soccer city, and there's a huge soccer match tonight. Well, there is. We're going to talk about US. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I skipped jump one the second. gun. Yeah, I jumped the you gun. Jump the gun. We're going to get to that. We're, Anna's going to give us a breakdown of the United States Women's National Team. Their match tonight. That'll be a good one. But we'll first, I, what I yeah. thought was important to do today is we are going to do a Yeri Yurinen appreciation mm. segment. Yere. Yere Yay for Yere. Yere Yurinen is at this point three games in the highest rated player on Charlotte FC's squad compared to the rest of the league. And when I was watching this match yesterday, I was absolutely I drooling him. over the performance from the left back. Mm -hmm. And a left back is a position that uh, you're pretty familiar Love with. That. Right, right. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> what, what have you seen from Yere so far this season? Well, he's extremely dynamic. And I mean that I mean that because he's so good at taking corner kicks, but he's also great at getting up and down the flank defensively being set. He's really good when the game's in front of him, Look but those corner map. kicks. Yeah. I mean, he was all over it. I, I think closing down what you mentioned it Thursday, Danny, like Toronto wants to use the flanks and, and get the ball inside. And he really lessened the opportunities that prevent Milanda might be on their back foot. Um, and those corner kicks to go back to it, right. seven corner kicks for this side, all of them were phenomenal. And he's got a high ceiling. Yeah, I, I think it was an, uh, they wanted in swingers. I figured they probably, yeah. against a new keeper, they just wanted to get some in swingers from the left. And that's why they took Kerwin, on, Kerwin Vargas had been on the right side of corner right. kicks, kicking out swingers and, and so, really kicking sort of a low flat ball. We saw that on the, on the Tavares chance that led to the Milana goal in week one. That was a, off a really nice corner from the right that Kerwin took. But Yere replaced him in this match on the right side of the corners. Kerwin had the left side of the corners. Right. I think they just wanted in swingers coming at that new keeper. And it, it paid off. I mean, he had the really nice uh, corner to 
uh, uh, Urso, who had the glancing header. He had the really nice corner to um, uh, Privet, who almost had a ball, a goal in the back post off of a Yere corner. So when, Yere's when, serving up a nice ball. I'm still waiting for Andrew Privet's first MLS goal. And when that happens, Anna and oh I, well, we're going to be celebrating. Freak out. out. Freak out. Here's we question. are. Here's a question, a tactical question for you, Anna. Okay. You're left back, and you've got to jog all the way over to the opposite, the right corner, uh, to take the corner kicks. Does that put you out of position, like, do you have to sprint yourself back to, back to your spot once you take that corner uh, from the other side, or what's the deal there? I'd say no. I think it's Tavares either drops off or Burns slides over. However the team wants to do it, sometimes it's Privet would slide into that role if Toronto got a transition moment. Yeah. Um, Yernan's able to slide into that right spot. But to your point, I think those in-swingers are important because – why not take an opportunity? And they were on the six. Um, these players knew exactly where to be, but it just like it wasn't enough. I, I mean, also to point out, I don't want to miss this. He had six passes into the final third. That's more than the center midfielders. Right, 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 right. Y yeah, Yere was absolutely cooking. Come on, yeah. Yeah. and this is why this is the Yeri Yurinen appreciation segment. Yeah, because you're talking about a player that plays at the international level. You're you're talking about the first choice Finland left mm -hmm. back who's also the first choice, Charlotte FC left back. So as Dean Smith is starting to mold this squad into the image of what he wants Charlotte FC to be, players are going to step up and start proving to Dean Smith that you can't drop me. And yet a yeah. urine is one of those players, no doubt about it. For sure. I mean, Charlotte really uses their wide players. Byrne had a similar amount of touches, maybe not similar amount. of Yeah, he had seven passes into the final third. So Charlotte's really using those wide pieces because they have the athletic ability to get up and down. Now it needs to be a little bit more from like the 10 or just the midfield needs to be able to get that umph as well. It can't just be from the wide areas. But yeah. Can I tell you when I fell in love with Yere? Yes. And I always liked him, but it was when I when we were at the uh Availability probably three weeks ago, right at, uh, ahead of the home opener. Yes. And Yeri came out to talk to us, and he gave he dropped this absolute gem of a sound. When you play with a smile on your lips, you feel a little bit faster. You don't get tired. When you play with a smile on your lips, you feel a little bit faster. You don't get tired. When you play with a smile on your lips, you feel a little bit faster. You don't get tired. When you play with a smile on your lips, you feel a little bit faster. You don't get tired. When you play. It, it's it's almost like uh, me on the show. <laughs> when I do the show with a smile on my face, I definitely enjoy it more right. than when I'm acting all exactly. pissed off and angry. Exactly. Uh, about and so and Gary's been putting a smile on your face. He has. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just about the the passes in the final third, right? It's not yeah. just about his ability to, to play corners as well. Mm -hmm. There's a phrase that I love to use when I'm watching a soccer match and when I feel like the team like really isn't connecting. I, I beg the squad, screaming at the television, I say, knock it around a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. let's yeah. knock it around. Let's ma maintain some possession. Right. And if you want to let everybody wanna... feel what the ball feels like at their feet for a second. Exactly yes. right. And, and when Shot FC is is yearning for that moment, Yeri mm -hmm. Yearning's the perfect person yeah. to give the ball to because he can maintain possession, he can make the right pass, and he can knock it around a little bit. Yeah. And he's playing next to a center back who's new to the mm -hmm. league and privet. So, Privet has that comfortability next to him, knowing that he's going to lead in moments that he doesn't understand. Maybe there's going to be moments this early on in his career for sure. Uh, yeah, I think I agree. That's a good point. He's a big part of what we're doing. And I think as 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 tough as it is to eat this loss in Toronto, when we feel like we should have had a point for sure, based on our efforts and our control mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, we were beaten by a worldie. It feels like we should have a point. And so you wake up today and you're feeling, eh, I don't know. But when you think back on that performance, and I think if you go back and rewatch the game, even if you just rewatch the highlight package, you're going to feel a lot better. And you're going to watch Yere and you're like, man, this guy's making an impact. And this is like, uh, like as someone in the chat said, you know, it, we used to bitch about left back forever. We had Jog and Joe out there. It was Jog and, and Joe. Yeah, <laughs> Where did you get that? That's amazing. I'm stealing that. <laughs> Good old Jack and Joe. Is that you? He's killing it down in Costa Rica, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, played, okay, played, okay. Uh, he actually had a really good match in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, but then... Uh, then so he wasn't jogging that He game. was playing... Well, he had moved to center back. Like he a, jogged oh, so okay. much at left back, they moved him to center back, actually. <laughs> but uh, Jock and Joe was there. Remember, Brant Bronico played a game at left back. It was horrible. So Latin oh, Fire has a really good uh, uh, identification here I agree. of something that, that we needed for sure. And Alan Schmidt, you know, 134 appearances for Genk. Genk's a really... You know, if you hear the word Genk... You know, you probably like, who the F is that? They're one of the better clubs in Belgium, and they have been for a long time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a great find. And uh, Alan Schmidt loves the loves the gift loop. You know, when you play a smile on your face. Smile, smile on, on your lips. lips. On your lips. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you play faster. You don't get tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, what, so what, good. What what a guy Yuri Yernan is, and that's yeah. one thing that we'd love to do on the show. And we're we're not love gonna you, come we're on not gonna hide it. We're, we're not yeah. gonna pretend like it doesn't exist. You know, we like to fall in love with Charlotte FC players. We like to enjoy uh, the football that these these players. Uh, do week in and week out. That's why we, Danny and I love to go to training. Anna was there yeah. with us this week as well. It was great to have you, by the way. Yeah. This week. Yeah. It was a beautiful facility. I mean, the fields, everything. I was really impressed with oh, yeah. really like how their will, their communications guy put the whole thing together. It was such a fun, um, really cool like moment to meet these That's guys. That's the one and only Will Martin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, the access is a real thing too because there was a photo yeah. taken that was, that it said, hey, it's a, it was a rainy. It was ugly. Wednesday morning, it was ugly. And there were still many people that showed up to, mm -hmm. to talk to the players. It was Yuri Tavares. It was Andrew Privet. It was mm -hmm. early, earlier this week. You, you got your chance to go over there. We're going to be back there this week mm -hmm. on Wednesday and Thursday as well. Um, just to, to keep up with the questions. I'm going to ask Dean Smith about Enzo Capetti again this it's week time. just for what it's worth. <laughs> You should. He's, he's going to yeah. get pissed off at me at some point here in the next couple of weeks. I'm ask you, I said this last episode. <laughs> they need to have like a second camera on John when like everybody else is done with the at the press conferences. And John's just like firing more and more <laughs> questions at Dino. It's amazing. Well, there, there was, it's like a conversation. Yeah, Will yeah. Martin, who you mentioned, it was like he he was everyone was done asking. He goes, well, "Ask all any other questions." I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I got, got one. more. I got another one. I, 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 I keep yeah, yeah. keep going. Um, so I, funny. I appreciate, it's own show. I appreciate Dean's time, and I'll tell an inside story. Do it about the press conference, please. On on Thursday, that is that is enjoyable. Is that we we've talked about the, some some of these uh, British terms, American terms being right. being lost in translation. Mm -hmm. And our friend Bridget McCall, the Queen's Pitch podcast, she was there and she asked Dean Smith about Toronto's Olympico goal last year. They scored two against us, right? Against yeah. against Charlotte FC, against the wind. Mm -hmm. Against the wind. That's what happened last year at Toronto. It was a crazy game. It was like forty mile per hour winds. Oh my gosh! And, and Toronto, it was it was an insane game. Right. Yeah. I'll send you a link to it. And what ended up happening is, is if you were on a corner, mm -hmm. you could whip it out all the way out to like the PK spot, and, it, and, the, wind <laughs> and the wind would, would bend it into it, yeah. the far corner. Oh my gosh! And and was it Bernadeschi? Bernadeschi, yeah, yeah. Mm. And also Messi has been trying. Messi has been attempting to score an Olympico like every every I'm match, basically off corners, yeah, because yeah. he's never done it, I guess. So. Yeah. so, so when Bridget asked Dean Smith that question, he kind of was like, "Yeah, well, like, have you guys been practicing your Olympico?" Wait, he doesn't. He didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "What's an Olympico?" I'll be honest. I didn't know until last season. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah see, I did not know. It's something that people are are finding out here because it's definitely a South American term. It was yeah, originated in South American. Olympico. Yeah, for sure. Uh, South America for sure. Spelled with an I, not a Y. That's so that you know. so that was a really funny moment at the press conference. And then afterwards, we were all kind of hanging out uh, after the press conference was over, laughing about the fact. And and Dean made a joke, and he said, he's like, yeah, when you, when you said Olympico, you know, I, I wasn't quite sure what you were saying. I, I learned something today. And he said, uh, just like I learned something in Coachella when uh, one of the staff uh, members said that so and so is out there shagging soccer balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. He was like, he was I like, love the game, but <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like Shit, that means something different. Uh, where I'm from, amazing. amazing. Oh my gosh, so these, I, yes, I love that. Yeah, so these little moments are happening around yeah. this English manager and. Um, yeah, really just don't that. picture anybody shagging any soccer no, balls. No, yeah. Right, but no, yeah. it's like shagging fives. It was just, it was just such an American <laughs> term that everybody gets. But Dean was like. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Eh? In the soccer balls <laughs> on the feet? I mean, in the locker room, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice uh, he uses the word gaffer a lot, and now the media has started to use yes, it and asking questions, it. and yeah. I love that. Gaffer. That's a fun word. And they start calling uh, Westwood skipper also. I've did they? Yeah. I didn't notice that. Yeah, the gaffer and the skipper. You know, skipper. captain, the coach, the gaffer and the, ca and the skipper, whatever you want to call them. But yeah. we've got yeah. one more. I, I lied when I said we got one more segment. We had two more segments. Right. We're gonna we're gonna, end the, we're gonna end the show. Um, like the Patriots that we are, we're going to talk mm. about the United States women's mm. national yes. team yeah. who is playing tonight. Yes. Anna, of course, is a NWSL expert. She's a play-by-play -play announcer and analyst for NWSL as well. She's going to be working closely with the USL Super League here in Charlotte. We're waiting for the announcement of the, the team name. It should be coming soon. Actually, it's coming yes. this month. Yes. We're going to be there at Protagonist uh, in Loso this month to debut the team name. We're going to talk to a bunch of people there as well. But tonight there's a massive match between the United States Women's National Team and Brazil. Can you get us ready for that one? Gosh, I mean, it's been one heck of a CONCACAF W Gold Cup tournament. I feel like, first of all, the win against Canada, if anybody watched it, that soccer field in L.A. was just straight water. Like the ball was not moving. It went to PKs. So it wasn't a really good showing 
for the United States. The Columbia game is really where they bounce back from that Mexico loss. Alex Morgan redeemed herself. She went down in the box the way that Capetti should have gone down in the box. Exactly. He could take a Expert note out of striker. her book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but Full I, circle, well done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Love it. But I think for U.S. and for Kilgore, who's the interim head coach before Emma Hayes comes over from Chelsea, just continue to change up that lineup. Keep the young players on the field. I want to see more of Jenna Nyswanger. She's the next up-and-coming left back. Crystal Dunn might be out of a starting job. They might have to move her into the midfield because Nyswanger, rookie of the year last year for NWSL, I mean, you can't replace Germa in the, in the center back role for them. And... Gosh, I think it's going to be really exciting. Brazil has that tiki-taka style of soccer. It's always really fun to watch. If you watch them in the World Cup, um, they had a pretty good performance. Brazil's and got a couple of NWSL to, stars also, They right? do. Ari Borges, who plays um, for Racing Louisville. Dabinha, who's going to be probably playing up top. She plays for Kansas City, who's opening up the first ever women's soccer stadium this season, CPKC. Um, so, yeah, there's some really talented players for Brazil. I think this is going to be a really good tactical match for the U.S. because in the World Cup, they really struggled with their own tactics. This game is where they need to kind of figure out how to break down. Give us team. a guaranteed goal. Who's, go who's scoring the goal for the United Gosh. States tonight? If Alex Morgan continues in her form, I think she'll score a goal. I haven't been really impressed with her of late, but that Columbia game, I think she really redeemed herself. She wasn't even initially on the training camp roster. It's so funny to think of Alex Morgan. Like, now, I know I'm old now that Alex Morgan is like the wily vet of it's the crazy. squad instead of like the young up-and-comer, but hey, what can I say? Yeah, I mean, gosh, maybe Jenna Nyswanger. <laughs> she had a great goal against Columbia too, but we'll see. I thought about that earlier in the tournament when I saw the picture of the starting 11. I always enjoy those before the match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when the 11 get together, they take the official photo. Yeah. Love those. And I was so looking fun. at the squad, mm -hmm. and I saw Alex Morgan. And I said, "Look at her! You know, towards the end of her career, I know, still interested in playing. Um, she's she's coming off being a mother as well. Was yeah, her first child. Charlie's her first kid. Yeah, yes, exactly yourself. right. So she she has a child. She comes back, mm -hmm. and she says, "You know, I want to finish my career and do so at yeah. a high level and win a trophy. So for me, I'm I'm circling Alex Morgan tonight. That's who yeah. I'm watching. That's why I want to turn on the TV. Yeah, and watch Alex. She's she's good in those moments where she knows she hasn't been." great of late but she needs to redeem herself there's not many people i feel like clutch in the gene. world in that's general, called clutch yeah yeah that's another new word i learned here today um <laughs> that well hey can do this it. Is the, just like the the press conference room or at ahpp this is the learning room you know, just, you know anyone can <laughs> every learn, sunday sure. yeah so, uh, so tonight, it'll be a fun one the match is 8 15 8 15 and it'll be in san diego but 8 15 eastern time 8 15 eastern so we can all watch it tonight so we've got a sunday night of soccer uh, in the QC, you can kick back on the couch tonight and watch the United States women's, women's national team. What, mm -hmm. what stage are they in the competition right this now? Is the final. Oh, this is the final. Oh, yeah. I, did, I did not realize that. W Gold Cup, <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. This is trophy okay. I, did, this I did not it. realize it was the final. Time. Let's go win yeah, the Gold yeah, Cup. Yeah. Why not? Right? Yeah, why not? Let's go. Good, Let's good, good presidents headed into the Olympics. This is what they need. They need that umph. By the way, I mentioned the USL Super League, mm -hmm. and I should mention that one of the assistants tonight on the bench is Philip Poole, who mm -hmm. will be the manager of the usl super league tier team here found the charlotte, charlotte tie i love it brilliant yeah. if, if, if you want, city if you want to get to know uh philip pool make sure you go back on our podcast feed you can you can hear our interview Great listen with my interview yeah. with 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 philip pool as well and Anna yeah. i know is going to interview him soon as well here in town chief Kiefer says alex has ice in her veins she will always show up when needed that was that basically what you were trying to say where does she rank though as, as far as like oh, you know united states women's national team players oh, okay where does she rank as far as all-time greats I mean, she's top five easy, like for sure. I, it, the fact that she's been able to come back and redeem herself, like she came back and her first season with San Diego, she, I think, won the golden boot. Like she was insane. She was doing everything for that club, knowing she had to redeem herself. If she wanted to make that World Cup roster. She's just one of those players, like I said, you just count on in those moments when you need her the most. So I'm not, the, I'm not, I, but I also like recognize when she needs to get better i'm not right. an alex morgan super fan yeah. I, I like her but oh hey that's the final i mean it's time yeah. to show up in <laughs> He's the final. that's it. all i can yeah. say her and sophia it's, smith yeah. are going to be competing for that starting I've, I've got a feeling and we talked we, we okay. talked about enzo capetti a lot tonight mm -hmm. we talked about what is required to play the number nine right, position right. at a very high level yeah. talk about yes. full circle just make sure you turn on this match tonight you'll see yes. it played at a very high yes. level you'll see alex being smart in the box yes yes we appreciate everybody hanging out with us today on charlotte soccer show these Sunday shows, of course, streamed live at Hot Fly Brewing Company. Appreciate everybody being with us mm -hmm. yesterday for the watch party. You can Appreciate always show up. We got yes. seats right yes. here if you want to show up. You know, get some yeah, free beers. We, we have a special guest as well here watching us yep. live here today. 
shout out to to, to Roma. Danny's daughter is, is here today. <laughs> shout out to her. It's always great she's to see her. Making fun of me over on the uh, side. Hanging out. I think she's watching. She, I saw her with her AirPods in yeah. watching something. I think she was watching the show. I, <laughs> I think she had the AirPods in so she didn't have to hear the show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, fair enough. But uh, Danny, it's always a pleasure, man. It's been a great man. weekend. It's, it's been a great. It's been a great run of games. And you're heading out to Nashville right. this so, week. So yeah, quick. Oh. Let's do a, some quick business here for the next week because we've we have like. We have gone all in. Johnny and I and Anna have gone all in on the start of this year. We've been bringing you the Thursday previews, the Sunday shows, the Saturday parties, the Saturday pregame shows, the edits on the press conferences. Like we've like stepped up our. We've decided we're going all in, all in on this team because we love this team and we love the community that's built around it. And so we've gone hard these first three weeks. We have put out a ton of content. It's probably going to dial back a little bit this week. It's a tough week. I'm traveling for work. Johnny's got some stuff going on. So we may not have quite as many things in the feed, but I can't wait to get to Nashville, my first away day of the year. I will be there. I'll post stuff on the IG feed for my road trip. John will be here. And then we got a huge, huge, huge Sunday next Sunday. Why don't you tell us what's coming up? Yeah, Crown Legacy, Carolina Core. It's the opening match of the MLS Next Pro season. We're going to be there pre-gaming. We're going to do a live pre-game show. We're going to talk to Darius Barnes, Crown Legacy president. We'll be uh, at the tailgate. We're going to be at the tailgate as well. If you show uh, up at the tailgate, you might get on the show. I've got a feeling that we're going to bring some hot fly cans, too, to get out as well. <laughs> Trust me, I've had this conversation. Mint uh, City so Collective is going to be out. there. Like, yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah, it, it is going to be a, a really nice uh, – and what we're going to do we is – we might, And we're supposed to have an interview with a first-team player. Depend, it may, it may need, we may need to beat Nashville to to get that commitment to follow through. But in theory, we'll have a first team yeah, player. Yeah. That Who knows? Well. Maybe, maybe it'll be uh, Andrew Privet. Who knows? Yeah. But either, either way, the point is, is that next Sunday we're going to be live about four o'clock Eastern time, an hour ahead of that kickoff against uh, Carolina Core for Crown Legacy. And this is a, it's a derby, but it's a bit of a friendly derby with this new Carolina Core franchise. And something that you can look out for this week, we are, believe it or not, on Charlotte Soccer Show, <laughs> thanks to my friend Danny Brams over here, doing a Carolina Core season preview. We talked to right. Eddie Pope this week. You, you know him as one of the, the, the best United States men's national team defenders of all time. Mm -hmm. You know Roy Lassiter as well, who happens well, to be the, the Carolina Core head coach. Uh, I, I had fun with him because I was looking up his stats. And he scored like 37 goals and 55 appearances yeah, yeah, yeah. for oh DC gosh. United. And they I asked him, I was like, is that a typo, man? Because that's pretty damn fucking good. <laughs> yeah, that's and amazing. So uh, his, his, he scored the most goals in a single season in MLS history until 2018, where I think it was Joseph. Martinez. Joseph broke it, and then Zlatan broke Joseph's, and then mm. uh, Vela broke Zlatan's. But he, was hold, he held that record for quite a bit of time. Yeah, he did. So check that I out. Think, I think – 20 years yeah exactly yeah. right wow. yeah, yeah. yeah check that out on our feed this week we have those interviews coming so, for you as well we're going to cover the charlotte independence and we got as well. independent yeah we went to the media days we did a bunch of interviews at media days we wanted to wait to release and we didn't want our independent stuff to get lost in sort of the wave of a charlotte fc weekend so look for that stuff on tuesday we've got carolina core start tuesday and wednesday we'll roll out our carolina core our independent stuff independence debut next weekend Legacy Core debut next weekend. Charlotte on the road. It's massive, man. NC Courage season NC kicks Courage off this season weekend. Kicks off. I mean, North Carolina showing up. Carolina's a soccer state. It, it is. is. It, it, the Carolinas <laughs> are a soccer region. There's nothing yeah. about yeah. that. What's on your schedule for the next week? I've got four NWSL games this upcoming weekend. Wow. Gosh, the I don't voice. even know. The off voice the of top NWSL. Of my head, yeah, but I know Kansas City plays Portland Friday in their home opener in this brand new stadium in Kansas City. That's the only one I can tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> well, you can hear Anna all game by game weekend. basis. You know, it's uh, it's a one yeah, right season every every week. The, the for so sure. The, for point, sure. the point is, is that the soccer season is blooming here yes. right. in the right. Carolinas, as is all the beautiful flowers. We went on. I, yes. I got a chance going to walk today with my wife with our two dogs, and just looking around. It's it's that time of the year where it's early March, yeah. and you pinch yourself and you say, "This is why I live in Toronto." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I it had is that beautiful. Today. Eat your honey so you don't get those allergies. That's what they say. If yes. you eat local honey, you won't have an allergy reaction. Thank you, thank you Beans. Appreciate you. Yeah. yeah she's not going to give you, she's not just going to give you um, really intense soccer analysis. She's going to make you feel better at home as yeah, well. Yeah, medical really nice. advice. That's me. <laughs> He's Anna Witte. He's Daniel Bramlett. I'm John Hayes. And as always, for the crown, baby. baby.